I figured I'd make a video to how to install a KFI 72 inch poly plow on your 2020 Can-Am Maverick X3. Um, this is going to be the same plow mount for anyone that has a 17 to a 21 X3. Uh, the reason I went with the KFI versus many of the other plows is the plow itself and the tube system is always going to be universal if you were to upgrade or downgrade on your side-by-side -side. and then the only part of this kit that's vehicle specific is the actual mount that connects to the frame underneath so in this video i'm going to show you guys uh some of the issues i ran into and overall how this thing mates up and how it functions on the x3 all right so hooking up the actual tube to the blade um, I had a hard time figuring out this picture, but doing a little bit of Googling, what happens is you throw your carriage bolt in. This is an inch and a half. This piece goes in and it's actually tapered to go over the side of the carriage bolt, leaving you the flat surface here. Add your washer and add the 15 16 nut. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over to this side. All right, so here's both sides tightened with the carriage bolt, the uh, bearing in there, and the washer and the nut. So with both sides tight, this thing's able to move with that bearing in there. All right, I kind of jumped some steps on you guys, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, explain it. So after we got this thing tightened, uh, the instructions call out to go ahead and assemble the springs. So. Uh, real quick, it's hard to see in the photos for the instructions, but it's going to be a, a nut, a washer, and then a washer up top and another nut. Uh, that way you're actually able to adjust the spring. Right now I have everything fairly loose, and uh, I'm not quite sure on which portion of the pivot plate I need to be at. Uh, I just went to this right now because it was the easiest, and uh, we won't actually know until we get it mounted on the... Uh, on the Can-Am. Uh, down here, these are your, a, uh, your adjusters for the angle of the dangle for your plow. Uh, in the instructions, they actually call out for a default, uh, default location. So these are just using the Allen head bolts and the 5 8 nuts on the back. And basically, uh, I put them in the top. So again, once we get this mounted over here, that's when we'll actually know if we have to adjust this and we can change the tension of our springs and get this tuned in. All right, so the next thing we're actually gonna go over is the winch mount plate. And there's a lot of options on mounting this thing. And in the instructions, they have, again, uh, basically universal default positions. But one thing I wanna go over, at least in my case, with the X3, the, the, the winch itself is actually very low on this machine. So uh, this is probably mostly X3 guys applicable, but basically instead of mounting for the instructions upright, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this down. That alone's already gonna give me an extra like one inch of lift to help compensate for the winch point being so low on this machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this right now with the uh, carriage bolts and the 5 8 nuts. So earlier I said that these were 5 8 bolts for the actual winch attachment. And they're actually a 9 16 And as I said, I flipped it opposite of the instructions purposely to help compensate the winch on the X3. Uh, another thing I wanna note is once you know the setup actually works, and uh, I'll let you guys know towards the end of the video, but uh, me and myself personally, once I know this, this is the spot that this needs to be, I'll probably end up uh, adding some additional welds underneath it here, because if you were to actually over uh, retract your winch cable, you can actually, I would assume, pull these two bolts right off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and include a photo from Amazon they do actually make winch cable stoppers. All right, ho 
Hopefully this helps anybody with a Can-Am. So I actually had to hook up to my tow hook on my big truck just to be able to pull this winch out. What happened is this uh, winch line protector had like scrunched up and I couldn't actually retract my winch. So um, I can see myself right now just cutting this off. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do that because it, it's just nothing but issues. All right, so now that we got this figured out, so what I ended up doing is I cut about half of that winch cable protector off and I left myself with a little bit. That way, uh, while I'm using the plow, the portion that's uh, remained outside of the winch has protection. And also come summertime when I'm pulling somebody out of the mud hole, if I gotta make a loop around like an axle or a bumper or something, I'm still having my protection, but uh, probably not necessary but uh, I went ahead and did it just because it was uh, that was the cause of my issue but back to what I was saying for those winch stoppers is uh, it's actually a uh, it's two allen bolts that plug on here so that way you feel the tension when this thing comes in so you don't actually over pull your plow in and snap those two bolts off that I was mentioning earlier I'm gonna go ahead and include that photo right now So up next is installing the plow flap. And if you're working by yourself, uh, this piece is real flexible. So what I did is I used a uh, channel locks to hold the other end for me. In the instructions, they have a recommended and preferred way to install this. Uh, the way that they recommend is uh, with this lip facing up. Uh, I can't think of what the difference is, maybe just to allow the flap to extend more, but uh, cause technically you could flip this piece over and install it this way as well. All right, so here's what it looks like with uh, the one carriage bolt and washer and nut in. And then what I'm gonna do is jump over to this side, take off my clamp and go ahead and get a nut and bolt through here. Uh, one thing I did notice is also for you guys to check out is uh, I found one of these bolts not all the way tightened, so we'll have to fix that before we actually start using this. Um, another thing too is not all these holes are punctured. Um, I mean, they're punctured, they're just the pieces aren't actually removed. So make sure you remove these before you actually get up to this point. Um, but uh, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and mount all this up. All right, I went ahead and got all the uh, hardware in for the flap all loosely. I'm gonna go ahead and use my impact here. The bit is a 7 16 And the other thing I noticed too is all the reinforcements in here, all these fibers. I'm gonna actually take my torch and go down the whole line and basically clean up all these little reinforcement fibers. Um, I just think it gives it a cleaner look. Not something you have to do, but uh, I like things looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything up and I'll be back. So here it is with the plow laid down. Um, and I'm assuming this is how most guys are gonna store it. And the reason I flipped it down like this is cause I gotta tighten up that one uh, blade uh, bolt that I found loose. And those are actually a half inch. So again, I'm gonna use the impact, but uh, back to the rubber. I can now see why we installed the flap upwards because uh, assuming this is how most guys are gonna store their plow uh, just for storage purposes. Um, if you were to install this piece with this angle facing down, uh, this lip would be digging into your, um, into your flap here. So that is a good call to go ahead and install it uh, per the recommended side for the uh, reinforcement for the flap. So the last part to set up on the plow before we start on the plow mount is the side markers. So these are gonna mount, uh, I'm assuming you can go inside or outside. The way this plow is designed though, I'm gonna put mine on the outside to give me a better visual of where my plow's at. Uh, and I don't have to worry about it getting torn off the way it's extended past on the blade here. And uh, this might be something you have to adjust once you figure out the angle of your plow. 
using those adjustments that I talked about earlier. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in and then uh, put them in the center. And then, like I said, with that top uh, bolt that goes through, you could actually change the angle of where these are at. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in and then uh, we'll move on to the plow mount. So this is how it looks with the plow markers on. I give you guys a close up. Uh, it's just uh, through bolted, washer on both sides and uh, double nutted. Um, as I mentioned, I was getting ready to go on to the plow mount. I actually forgot to put the plow shoes on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up for that and I'll show you how the install for these go. Here's what this looks like with the instructions. Uh, here they give you a very generic way to stack uh, the, the rubber bushings with the washers. Uh, me, I have a gravel driveway, so I'm gonna try to keep the, uh, the shoe as low as possible. That way my blade doesn't sit there and push on my gravel. Um, each bag has its own hardware kit for each side. And inside this, they do give you uh, longer hardware for the uh, mounting of the the shoes and they give you shorter ones the shorter ones are if you have the steel version of the 72 inch kfi plow uh, if you have the poly plow you're going to use the longer screws another thing i recommend that would help with this is having a magnetic pen because you actually throw the bolts through and then you got to reach under here and put the nuts on and if you drop it you almost have to tilt the plow up to be able to get it out so have a magnetic pen handy on you but uh i'm gonna go ahead and finish tightening this and then jump over to the other side and i'll show you where i ended up leaving my settings at when i get back so before i actually jump to the other side um, i'm not sure if this matters but if you look at the detail in this photo see how there's that notch on the bottom versus it being at the top so if you look at these um they actually have it. So I just followed the picture. I don't see it making any difference, but uh, that's what I went ahead and did. And uh, you're gonna wanna use the open end of your wrench and put the lower bolt in first because uh, the first time I tried this uh, with both uh, bolts through, I couldn't actually even reach the lower bolt. So I took the top one out and then I used the closed end of my wrench. And then once I got this tight, my wrench was stuck in here. So. Use the open end of your wrench, do the lower one, and then go ahead and do the top one. All right, so the snowshoes are on, and uh, here's where I'm leaving my settings at, only because I have a gravel driveway. I did the washer, the two rubber spacers. I went with six uh, washers on top of this, and then I put the one on top, and here's what the pin looks like installed. So now we are officially done with setting up the plow and the tube mount it's time to actually set up the mount on the can am all right so i know it looks like my plow's hooked up and i didn't show you the mounting process but uh i'm having an issue right now guys and i think it's because i have the rock crawl edition having this uh oem front bumper it's not allowing me to get to any of the uh, mounting points for this bracket so I reached out to uh, Ride Today Power Sports on eBay. That's actually who I bought this from. Uh, I gave him a quick message just to ensure that this is actually the amount I needed. And uh, it's a little late in the, in the night, or I would have called uh, KFI. These guys are actually located in uh, Spring Valley, Minnesota. So I might give them a call. Um, but basically I removed the aluminum skid plate. <laughs> And the angle of this bracket almost seems to match. So if this is like the best piece I can get, I might just have to weld my own points in here to be able to mount this. There's a uh, holes, uh, two in the back and two up front. So I might have to weld like some tabs on here so I can bolt this up. Um, I looked around other brands and stuff and I even thought about just taking this bumper off for like the winter season, but I don't even think that's an option because the way the Can-Am factory winch is mounted, it pretty much needs the support from this bumper to be able to function. So as of now, 
this video is uh, on hold until I hear back from either KFI or the guy I bought it from on eBay.